Good afternoon to the members of the media, my ministerial colleagues, civil servants present, and to the people of Bermuda. It is an honor to stand here today at the conclusion of our first cabinet meeting as the new government. This morning, we reviewed our ministries in order to address the pressing issues facing this island. In the coming days and weeks, we will roll out precisely how we will implement our first 100-day plan, which was endorsed by the people of Bermuda at the polls last week. One of the most important matters discussed today was our plans for public education. The Minister of Education and the Minister for Public Works are working diligently to ensure that all schools will be ready for our students. Additionally, we will be keeping our promise to increase financial support available to students who may wish to attend Bermuda College in the autumn. We have spoken on many occasions about getting Bermudians back to work and ensuring fair treatment. Later this afternoon, <clears throat> the Minister of Home Affairs, the Honorable Walton Brown, and the Minister Levita Fogo, the Minister for the Cabinet Office with responsibility for government reform, and I will meet with union leaders. We wish to hear directly from those that represent our workers, their ideas of how we can work together to make Bermuda better. We will be a government willing to listen, and we are confident that our public sector unions only want the best for Bermuda. Through collaboration, this government will be able to create comprehensive plans to address any concerns. But the first step must be to open the floor for constructive dialogue. Tomorrow, the Minister of Economic Development and Tourism, the Honorable Jamal Simmons, and I will meet with members of ABIC, the Association of Bermuda International Companies. Next week, we will meet with <clears throat> representatives from ABIR, the Association of Bermuda Insurers and Reinsurers. The objective of these meetings are simple, to ensure that we work together to build on Bermuda's strength as a highly regarded and well-regulated international financial center. We see the unions and international business representatives as important stakeholders as we work to create jobs in Bermuda. This government is committed to the prosperity of international business. However, we know that we can grow our international business sector at the same time as we put Bermudians first. The two are not mutually exclusive, and this government will ensure that we do both. <clears throat> Together, we work collectively with both parties to advance our interests internationally while creating more opportunities for Bermudians locally. In the last five days, your government has been busy getting to work and, to quote, looking under the hood. In the coming days, I'll provide an additional update on another matter of national importance for our economy. The final matter that I'd like to share today is that the House of Assembly will convene two months early in September to advance our legislative agenda as we begin to build an economy in Bermuda that works for all Bermudians. Thank you, and I'm now happy to take your questions. Uh, Mr. Blake, sorry, Mr. Blake, you mentioned that we're going to be looking at providing additional funding for students that attend Bermuda College. How oh, exactly is that going to be funded? That was one of the concerns that were expressed during the general election as well. We're testing that the PLP government is going to look at introducing a number of social initiatives to speak, but it's not clear how they will be funded. Um, what I will tell you is, Gary, is that when the cabinet has met, the cabinet is aware of what our responsibilities are. The primary responsibility is that of fiscal prudence, and that is what has been shared at our cabinet meeting today. And as I said, you'll be hearing more things from our government in over the coming days about our 100-day plan. But what is clear is that in order to ensure a fair Bermuda, financial resources should not be a barrier to success, and we should not, they should not be a barrier for our young people or some of our mature people to obtain additional qualifications at the Bermuda College. We will make sure that is a reality, and as we look under the hood, there is a lot of spending that we will find that we can stop, and there are places where we can redirect the priorities to where they need to go, and that is developing our Bermudian talent. You mentioned that you've had discussions and you will have discussions with Indica and 
and we dealt with the empathy generation, we worked out talks with them. What were they looking for from the PLP government and what would the PLP government be expecting from them? Um, what I would say is, Gary, is that the Progressive Labor Party, um, when we were in opposition, had an excellent relationship with the companies in ABIC and the companies in ABIR, and we met with them regularly, and I did as the Shadow Minister of Finance. What we will continue to do is to look at how we can advance our mutual interests together. What we all want is continued economic growth in Bermuda and more jobs that are created in Bermuda that Bermudians have the opportunity to fill. That will be our discussions, and that will be what we are looking to move and to advance. I am doing this press conference, I have nothing to do with the airport, but in your uh, election manifest, you mentioned it's stated that the airport contract will be revisited. Have you begun to do that yet? And what's the plan for that contract once you start revisiting it? Um, the minister responsible for our transport will address that matter at another press conference in consultation with the attorney general. Yeah. 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 You said you already met with a bear and a prior to becoming the governor. Yes. Because I read in um, somewhere today where you have not met with those people before. Well, like you said, you're correct in that information that's out there. Now. Absolutely. Um, there have been numerous meetings, not only with ABIC, but also with ABIR. We kept a regular relationship, and I think we met on a quarterly basis, and it was not just myself, but it was members of the Shadow Cabinet at that point in time. Many of them you see standing with me. So those relationships have been well enshrined, and those relationships will continue. The Progressive Labor Party was a responsible opposition, and we will be a responsible government, governing for all, to ensure that we provide additional opportunities in Bermuda for Bermuda. Why did you feel it necessary to meet with the unions before you met with the well, as the Progressive Labor Party government, we represent workers, and that is where uh, we have been. And what we want to ensure is that um, that we are not only meeting with our international business colleagues, but we're also meeting with the representatives of workers. And that, I think, is important, that our first meeting, after our first cabinet meeting, will be with the representatives of the workers of this country. And then we'll meet with the international business uh, community, and we'll meet with other persons as the, uh, the days and weeks go on. Any show um, Those items will be covered in press conferences later this week. Thank you. Um, on the weekend, you said you were kind of the hood and you've been surprised. Can you tell us what some of the surprises were? Uh, those surprises will be covered in a press conference to be held later this week. One point of clarification, if I may, will be the college is going to be, is going to be additional funding or it's going to be free? Um, those will be covered, the specifics will be covered at later points in time. What we've made clear inside of our platform is that financial resources should not be a barrier to attaining higher education. And that is what will make a reality. So when we hear the um, first 100 days agenda, obviously you said there's going to be more than that. What can we expect? What is likely to be the first public events that we'll see internationally? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a number of things uh, that were inside of our 100-day agenda, and those, as I said, the Cabinet did review today, and you'll be hearing more things. But there is 21 individual items which are outlined in our 100-day agenda, and those 21 individual items are what we invite the uh, electorate to hold us accountable to. But we have a plan for execution of those items that we discuss at length in our meeting, and we will be sure to implement them in, um, we will, some of those matters have already commenced their implementation, and you'll be hearing things um, in the future. And the one thing that I will not do as Premier is speak in advance of my cabinet until there are actual decisions that have been made at the cabinet table. We're not going to make announcements before that happened. Uh, we've had a very short time, so the cabinet meeting, the cabinet, the official cabinet agenda was rather brief. But following that, I'm expecting a more substantive cabinet agenda next week. And we'll be able to provide updates on how we are progressing with our first 100-day agenda and also other items which are mentioned inside of our platform. Have you included energy in that one of the platform, for example, the bill seems to be very anxious about the future? Um, Belco may be anxious about the future, but the responsibility of government is to balance competing interests. And as I said, the uh, minister who's responsible for energy, the deputy premier, will be updating uh, members on that following when cabinet has come to a conclusion on our direction forward. So there's been the editorial from the King and Compass and it's been sent all over the place. Um, is there any word back from this history? Is there any word about it? 
Well, I think uh, I think that what you was, may have been said by uh, the editor of the Royal Gazette would accurately uh, reflect the opinions of myself in regards to I think that persons who want Bermuda to succeed should work here and help to make Bermuda succeed as opposed to trying to uh, speak about us in less than flattering terms in an overseas newspaper. What I would say is that Bermuda is a well-regarded international financial jurisdiction and this government will do what is necessary and required to increase the lead over the Cayman Islands and to make sure that our business, um, we remain the domicile of choice and we will be, become the domicile of choice in more areas than we are currently. Can I ask in the future where you like to focus? Pardon me? Can I ask in the future where you like to focus? Well, I thank you very much, Gary. I tried to make sure my wife had warned me when I said that I'm not going to show up with a green tie today, that I do not confuse anyone. So I tried to make sure there was a little bit of red in there, but I can understand. But as the premier of the country, I should be neutral. So I guess I'm wearing blue and blue and red at the same time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you all.